Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor Advanced. In this video, we're going to work on a nice little proof that involves the limb soup of a couple of sequences. Uh, specifically, wh what I want to talk about is uh, suppose you have a couple of sequences and you add them term by term, and then you take the limb soup. If you were to break this up into the limb soup of each individual sequence, you would actually get something that is greater than or possibly equal to what you started with when you're just adding these things term by term. Now, of course, this will always work out provided that the right-hand side is not of the form infinity minus infinity. The reason for being is if we do have infinity minus infinity, uh, this is not defined. We have to have some sort of sense of how fast those are growing in the infinity and negative infinity direction to really make sense of what's going on here. So uh, I'm first going to uh, show you a couple of examples of what this is trying to talk about, and then we'll get into the actual proof, okay? So let's see a couple of examples of what's going on here. And I think a good way to do that is actually just to have a couple of sequences. So maybe for my first sequence, I'll go ahead and define it as say one half to the nth power. To get a good sense of what those terms actually look at, if n is equal to one, we just have a one half. If n is equal to two, then we're squaring the top and bottom. So we have a one fourth. Next one would be a one eighth and so on and so forth. So really just ending up with a whole bunch of fractions. Uh, for my second sequence, I'm gonna do something very similar. I'm gonna do one minus one half to the n. So you can imagine taking a one and then subtracting off the terms of our previous sequence. So one minus one half will again give us a one half. One minus one fourth will give us three quarters. One minus one eighth, seven eighth. And again, all the way down the line until we have all of those terms. Okay, so now that we have two sequences to play around with, let's see what happens when we start adding them term by term. These two particular sequences, I built them in just the right way so that if you add them term by term, you always get the number one, all right? So if these terms are always just constantly just a one, and then I decide I'm going to take the limb soup of those. Well, of course, we'll get a value of just a one on the right side. All right, let's take a look at these individually. If I'm looking at a n all by itself and I'm taking the limb soup, we're thinking of that upper limit, then these guys just go down to zero. So there's my limb soup for that first sequence. For the second sequence, uh, again, I'm looking at the upper limit of these. These are going towards one. Adding these together, I have zero plus one, and we see that in this case, with these two particular sequences, that these two things are actually equal. And I encourage you to go ahead and grab a couple of other sequences and, and do the same thing. You know, add them term by term, take the limb soup, see what you get, and then uh, take the limb soup of each sequence individually, and then add them up, and see if you get the same thing. Now, chances are, if you're dealing with convergent sequences, um, <laughs> you will always get the same thing. So it's also a good idea to look at a situation where the sequences are not convergent and see a case where these things are not going to be equal. All right, so again, let's cook up a couple of sequences that are going to be nice and interesting. The first one will take negative one to the nth power. So what does that look like? Uh, let's see, if n equals one, we have negative one. If n equals two, so that's a negative one squared, so that's a positive one. Then I'll have a negative one, positive one, of course, this will go down the line. And for bn, we'll do something very similar, but we'll go ahead and shift our index by making it a negative one to the n plus one. Okay, so what effect does this have? Well, when n equals one, this starts off at negative one squared, so the first term is one. The next term will have uh, n equals to two, two plus one is three, so this will give us a negative one. And you can see that it's exactly the same as our previous sequence, however, the terms are now just the opposite in sign. All right, now watch what this does. We've cooked these two sequences up in just the right way that if I decide to add these, you know, term by term, this will always give me a zero. So just a whole sequence of zeros. If I take the limb soup of a sequence of zeros, we'll get an answer of zero for our limb soup on the left side. All right, let's see what's going on on the right side. Uh, of course, these sequences uh, don't converge, but I can still talk about what's happening with the limb soup, what happens as n goes to infinity. Again, think of this as the upper sum. If I look at the upper limit as I'm looking at this, this will simply be one. 
And since the bn is exactly the same except for just shifted by an index, it will also be one. So adding these two together, I get a combined total of two. So in this instance, with these two sequences, we see that breaking it up creates something that is larger. All right, so our goal is to essentially just prove that we will always get this um, no matter whether we have convergent sequences or divergent sequences, again, just as long as the right-hand side is not infinity minus infinity. All right, so let's move on to the proof. For the proof of this, we really want to think about what's going on on the right-hand side of this, you know, where we have the limb soup of each individual sequence, and think about the different cases that we could get. One case that we might run into is that when I'm dealing with just that an, that it is a divergent sequence. It's divergent in that the limb soup is going towards infinity. And maybe over here for the bn, I'm getting an actual number. Doesn't really matter if it's added or subtracted, but it is a number of some sort, okay? So in this case, if I'm looking at the right-hand side of, a, of an infinity plus or minus just some fixed number, well, this in infinity is going to dominate things, making uh, their combined total actually go towards infinity. You know, even if I have a really large negative number for bn as the limb soup, doesn't matter, uh, an is driving it all the way to infinity. So what's that mean then, if I'm, you know, trying to say it's greater than or equal to the left side here? Well, if my right-hand side is infinity, then that's going to be greater than or equal to anything on the left side. So it's not really going to matter what's even over here. I could, you know, put anything, it's always going to be bigger than that. So in this case, you know, where I have infinity and some sort of number, then we know that it, was, it will always be greater than or equal to, so that case is taken care of. Now, in a similar fashion, we could also have some sort of number, uh, and then I could either, uh, let's say, add infinity, or maybe I'll have some sort of number, and maybe I'll subtract infinity. Almost the same case is going on here. So a n is fixed, it's a number, but really I have this driving term of infinity, only this time it's either pulling it uh, into a nice divergent sum to infinity, or it's taking it to negative infinity. In this first one, if I have infinity on the right-hand side, again, it could be bigger than anything on the left-hand side, so there's nothing really to prove. Anything could be on the left, it's always going to be bigger. This case is a little bit more interesting in that the right-hand side is negative infinity. Now, there is only one way where uh, uh, this inequality is going to work out, and that's going to be if the left side is also negative infinity. But of course it will be. Think about the individual terms going on here. These individual terms are diverging to negative infinity. So it's not going to really matter how you add them. This is just going to be some sort of fixed number. Uh, so we'll also get negative infinity on the left side. So verified in that case as well. Uh, we're not done with all the cases. Let's see. Both of these could be going towards infinity and, um, you know, just being added together. Uh, nothing really to add there. Right-hand side is just infinity. Left-hand side is infinity. Uh, so that one is good. Uh, so it looks like the only case is where the left-hand or uh, I'm sorry, the right-hand side is just some sort of number plus another number. In this case, you know, I will also get a number on the left-hand side, and I have to verify that those numbers really are in the correct order, that these numbers are less than the numbers I get on the right-hand side. So that's really the only part of the proof we have left to consider. So let's dive into that part. Now, let's be specific. When I say that the right-hand sides are both numbers, what I'm really trying to say there is that if I take a look at the limb soup of an and the limb soup of bn, that both of these are actual real numbers. Okay, so we're going to start there and see what that gives us. Uh, by definition, since we're looking at the limb soup of both these, uh, it means that I could fix some sort of value for k, and then look at what happens after k. So I'm going to be taking the soup of terms for an, where n is going to be some number larger than or equal to k. So I'm kind of like looking at the tail end of that sequence. And since I'm looking at the soup, this will be uh, greater than or equal to all the other terms in that sequence. All right? So again, we're just picking a k. We fix some sort of point. I'm looking at the, t uh, the soup 
of the tail versus all the other terms in that same tail. Now this works great for an, but of course we can do the exact same thing for bn. So I can take a look at the soup of the tail n for all values that are bigger than k and bn. And of course the reason why we can really say this is we know that both of these things are going to be actual real numbers and that's really important for the next step. I'm going to take each uh, side of this and just add them up. These things are actual numbers so I can go ahead and add them together a n plus b n and everything over here on the right is another number so we can add those together. So the soup of a n plus the soup of b n for n greater than or equal to k n greater than or equal to k and the order of our inequality will be preserved in this case since I'm just adding things that are small, uh, adding things that are big, no change to that inequality. All right? So essentially now we are left with this spot right here. And we have to think carefully what's going on. So I'm adding the terms of the sequence, sequences term by term here. And if I look at the soup of that, I know that this will actually still be preserved in my inequality. Now why is that? Why isn't that it jumps up bigger than what's going on on the right hand side? Well, you can think of it this way. Uh, there's no way it could jump bigger than what I have on the right hand side. Uh, because if it did, that would mean I have some sort of terms that actually got bigger than the right-hand side. And I know that all of these terms, since these are the soups, are going to be bigger than what's on the left. So the soup of their combined one is less than the soups of the broken up ones on the right-hand side. And again, this is just for anything bigger than or equal to k. So we've almost established uh, this limb soup that we need. The last piece of this is that we're going to take the limit as k goes to infinity of everything. Because if you want to think about it, this is like a little snapshot of what's going on right at that k spot. But k is arbitrary. We just pick some sort of random integer k to always establish this inequality. Which is telling me that the soup of my combined function or my combined sequences is less than or equal to the soup of each individual sequence. So if I take the limit of everything. If I move that little fixed place along, then again, we will preserve our inequality. But this is exactly what we were trying to prove in the first place. Uh, and technically, I'm taking k off to infinity. But since n is always going to be bigger than that, we'll just say n is going to infinity. So n off to infinity. And there you have it. That's the last case we are really worried about. And we can see that even in this case where I have a number and a number, it is still going to be greater than or equal to the limb soup of the combined uh, two sequences. All right. So in general, this is true as long as the right hand side is not infinity minus infinity. And we are done. Hey, if you like that video, don't forget to check out some of my other videos, or you can go ahead and visit my website at mysecretmathtutor.com. Thanks again.